It's often agreed upon that a definition is a good way to introduce a subject. Much less effective then would be to push that definition three sentences into such an introduction. Merriam-Webster's defines a dinosaur as any of a group, dinosauria, of extinct chiefly terrestrial carnivorous or herbivorous reptiles of the Mesozoic era. That's not incredibly helpful, so let's take a look at one. That was a dinosaur. What with their bony appearance and menacing size, one can identify one right away. But this is not a natural supposition. To look at Sue here, you say dinosaur. Well, maybe not to say it out loud, but think it. <laughs> I hope. Years ago, however, she may have looked like this to many people. Much of the modern dinosaur owes its looks to William Buckland. By today's standards, a mere idiot, he described the first dinosaur, the Megalosaurus, based on fossils found nearby one another. Much advanced from accounts dating back to 14th century China, where such fossils were thought to be from dragons. Although stupid, such interpretations have moved on to modern studies, which have moved past asking the question, what? and on to questions such as where, for what distance, and which way do I turn it, Steve? Buckland's interpretation has developed considerably quickly into the modern interpretation, now subject to investigations concerning evolution, even questioning time-honored ideas. Dinosaurs for much of early study were thought to be chiefly cold-blooded. However, when compared with bones of modern-day warm-blooded animals, many dinosaur bones have shown heavy similarities, most important of which are their densely vascularized bones. Thin sections of dinosaur bones also indicate a relationship to another modern animal. This is a bird. Birds have long been supposed to have evolved from dinosaurs. Their similar skeletal structure and fossil evidence of feathered dinosaurs have proven helpful. Their warm-bloodedness is indeed another indicator that perhaps these giant god-awful things were warm-blooded. How can we examine the possibilities of evolution? How might we suppose that the great Tyrannosaurus is now a sparrow? Fossils. What a segue. Indeed, what one finds today is not full biological evidence. Let us suppose that these two dinosaurs right here, we'll call them Donnie and Marie, were arguing. I don't like you. You're just jealous. What do I have to be jealous about? I've got more of a career than you. You brought my career down. What do you mean? You ruined my show. It was our bo both of our shows. Ah, 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 ah. Little Marie's body right here would start decomposing, her bones being the last remaining evidence of her once shining career. Slowly, through the process of mineral replacement, her bones would be replaced by apatite or pyrite. Somehow, fool's gold becomes fool's bone, something like that. Ten million years pass and somebody with something sharp hits a piece of rock. Inside the remains of poor Marie. She is then cast in resin and once again made the center of attention. But how do we know it's been only 10 million years? One might ask, couldn't she have ended up in that rock last Wednesday? Well, to ask that, one would have to be stupid. There are a number of ways of dating dinosaur fossils, all involving surrounding materials. Let's say this was a decomposing dinosaur rather than a dead human being. How would I be able to know how long ago he had died? By simply looking at his surroundings. Let's call this conveniently stopped watch a piece of igneous rock or an index fossil. By simply examining the age or date range of either one of those, they act like a broken watch, telling us exactly when we lost this dead guy. Using radiometric dating, we can measure when the surrounding igneous rock was formed by measuring half-lives. By knowing when certain fossils, index fossils as their term existed, as they would around the world, we would know when the dinosaur was placed in the related sedimentary stratum. What good does this do us, you might ask? Knowing the age of dinosaur fossils quite simply lets us know how long they survived, perhaps to one day know why they lasted so long, or why they died just when they did. I'm here on the Chicago River. There are a great many theories as to why the dinosaurs died off so quickly, Fossil records indicate a very quick loss of life. But what in all hell actually killed them? A disease? A comet? A meteor? The most commonly accepted reason is just that, that a comet or meteor such as created the body of water right behind me. What? Oh, a glacier did that. Can we pretend? Imagine a hot, warm, sunny day in Chicago. You're enjoying your day in the park, playing with your favorite pet, 
Mr. Juju, when all of a sudden, a flaming ball of death lands on Mr. Juju and all of Chicago. Your prime source of energy sapped. Everything grows dark. Every source of food gone. And so the fate of the dinosaurs seems to have been. A lack of sun slowly eliminated resources, thereby eliminating an entire food chain. Thus leading us back here. Dead dinosaurs. We've come a long way from thinking of these as dragons. And now, we even have evidence in our own backyards, birds, lizards, to help us unravel the clues in unveiling the truth about dinosaurs. But, in all honesty, we can never fully say exactly who they were and how they looked. For science is merely a catalog of possibilities based on a series of guesses. In which case I'll go on thinking that dinosaurs like this brontosaurus here never existed. And if they did, they were much smaller creatures, not capable of eating me at all. I'm Jason Klum. Good night.